Okay, guys, welcome back. We are going to do our examples now. All right. In a December 2000 report, the U.S. Census Bureau listed the levels of educational attainment for Americans over 65. Create an appropriate display for these data and write a sentence or two that might appear in a newspaper article about the report. So we look, there's counts here in thousands, and we've got all the education levels from no high school diploma, high school but no college, some college but no degree, two-year degree, four-year degree, master's degree, PhD or professional degree. Let's create a relative frequency bar chart. Note that a regular bar chart using counts would be fine, but I, want, I wanted to take the opportunity to calculate relative frequencies just to make sure everybody can. Recall, relative frequency is the same thing as percent. So for each class, the relative frequency is calculated. Class count divided by grand total times 100%. Let's make a relative frequency table, um, which is our scratch work, before we make our relative frequency chart with what the problem is actually requesting that we do. Okay, so here we've got our counts, and we're going to add the relative frequency in percents. So we're going to take the 9,945 um, of thousands of, of seniors who do not have a high school diploma, and we're going to divide by the 32,620 and then multiply by 100%, and that's going to give us 30.5%. Okay, and I did the same process for the rest of the percentages. I did 11,701 divided by 32,620 times 100%, and that gave me 35.9%, all the way down to the 757. I divided that by 32,620 multiplied by 100%, and that gave me 2.3%. Okay, so now we're going to make a relative frequency bar chart. Okay, so you want to make sure that you label it appropriately. So we've got percent of U.S. seniors in 2000. And um, you can tell on the left there, I've got 0, 5, 10, 15, up to 40. Those are percents, obviously, because that's how it's labeled on top. Plus, I have a key out to the side telling people that the, um, each bar, each blue bar in particular, is a percent of U.S. seniors in 2000. And I had the appropriate percentages um, as the heights for each category. Notice that each category has the same width, and that's so that the changes in the height due to the difference in relative frequency has a proportional change in the area. So the, the area uh, principle is upheld. Now we want to describe... The majority of people surveyed either did not graduate from high school or graduated from high school but did not attend college. So that means greater than 50%. Let's go back and make sure that that's true. Yep, it's a little over 30% high, uh, no high school diploma, and then a little over 35% no, um, no college but a high school graduate. So that's, you know, well over 50%. Fewer than 20% received two-year degrees or higher. So let's go back and make sure that that's a fair thing to say. So fewer than 20% received um, two-year degree or higher. So we've got about 4% for two-year degree. It's about like 9% for four-year degree, so 13%. About 3% for a master's degree, so 16%. And then 2 or so for a PhD or professional degree, yeah. So that's going to come in under 20%. All okay. right, so that was a fair um, description, just an overall summary, kind of let people know uh, just in two sentences, kind of a little snapshot of what the picture was telling us. All right, the next one we're going to look at is actually problem 22 from page 40 in your textbooks. Students in an introductory statistics course were asked to describe their politics as liberal, moderate, or conservative. Here are the results. So you can see we've got a contingency table here. Um, overall, there were 85 liberal, 80 moderate, 27 conservative members of the classroom. Um, overall, there were 77 female, 115 male. So those are, the, those are the marginal distributions because they're in the margins. They look at one variable at a time. Okay. Now, again, the um, looking at uh, politics conditional on being female, 
There you've got 35 liberal, 36 moderate, 6 conservative. Looking at politics conditional on being male, you've got 50 liberal, 44 moderate, and 21 conservative. Okay, so what percentage of the class are males? So we want to know the whole class, what percentage are males? So to do that, we do the total number of males, 115, divided by the total number of people in the class, because it's percentage of the class, so 192 times 100% is 59.9%. So about 60% of the class are males. What percent of the class is conservative? Okay, again, percent of the class means that my denominator is going to be the total in the class, so 192 is conservative means we want to know what percent of that hundred, the 192 people in the class are conservative. So there's 27 conservative people in the class, so 27 divided by 192 times 100% is 14.1%. What percent of the males are conservative? So we're going to switch our denominator there because we're not interested in the whole class, we're just interested in the males at this point. So there's 115 males, so that's going to be my denominator. Of the men, 21 are conservative, so we're going to have 21 divided by 115 times 100% is 18.3%. What percent of the students, okay, so the whole class of all the students are male conservatives. So in this case, since we want to know what percent of the students of everyone in the class, my denominator goes back to 192, but I'm still interested in just those 21 male conservatives. So it's 21 students are male and conservative out of 192 total students in the class. So 21 divided by 192 times 100% is 10.9%. Okay, so it's very important that you know percent of what. Okay, the of pretty much is going to tell you what your, de your denominator is. You have to read very carefully and make sure you know what you're taking the percent of. And you also, when you're interpreting percents, when someone tells you, well, 10.9% of students are male conservatives, you need to know that that's out of all the students, 10.9% have the, the characteristic of male and conservative. And that's different than question C, what percent of the males are conservative? Because now we're not considering the females at all. We're only considering the 115 males in the, in the classroom. 21 of those males are conservative. And so that means 18.3% of the males are conservative. But out of the whole class, there's 10.9% who are male conservatives. So you have to be very careful about what, about what percentage you're talking about. Okay, so Simpson's Paradox, we're going to look at that, an example of that problem 38 on page 43. A company must decide which of two delivery services they will contract with. During a recent trial period, they shipped numerous packages with each service and kept track of how often deliveries did not arrive on time. Here are the data. So we've got pack rats and boxes are us. So for pack rats, they had 400 regular deliveries and 12 packages were late. They had 100 overnight deliveries, 16 packages were late. And then for boxes RS, they had 100 regular deliveries and two were late. And they had 400 overnight deliveries and 28 were late. Compare the two services' overall percentage of late deliveries. Okay, so for that, we're going to add together all the packages that were late, and then we're going to divide by the total number of packages. So pack rats had 12 plus 16. They had 28 late packages out of 500 packages. We multiply that by 100%. That's 5.6%. 5.6% of their packages were late. For boxes RS, they had 2 plus 28. They had 30 late packages divided by 500 times 100%, and we get 6%. So overall, Boxes R Us had 6% of their packages that are late. Based on the results in Part A, the company has decided to hire pack rats. The top, um, the uh, company that's listed first and that has the 5.6% overall um, of packages that are late. Do you agree they deliver on time or often? Why or why not be specific? Well, let's look. Let's look at the individual rates, okay? So we're going to consider the conditional percentages. For regular packages, 
pa um, pack rats had 12 that were laid out of 400. 12 divided by 400 times 100% is 3%. And then for overnight packages, they only had 100 to deliver. 16 of them were late, so that gives them a 16% late rate. So 3% for regular packages and then 16% for overnight packages. Boxes RS had only 2% that were late for regular packages because they only had 100 given to them to deliver on a regular basis, just with regular delivery, and two of them were late. And they had 400 overnight packages that they had to deliver, and 28 of them were late, and so that turned out to be 7%. In each category, pack rats has a higher percentage of late packages when the data are disaggregated, so boxes or S would be a better choice. The reason that pack rats has a lower rate of late packages overall is that they have a much lower percentage of overnight packages, only 20% versus boxes or S having 80% of their packages being overnight packages. So that's what you were measuring when you looked at the overall. You, the reason pack rats looked better is because they had so many fewer overnight packages. Overnight packages are harder to get anywhere on time. And so that's what the problem was. They should have made sure that if one company was gonna have 400 regular packages and 100 overnight packages, then the other company should have had the same thing to make it look to make it um, fair. The results here are an instance of what phenomenon? This is called Simpson's paradox. When there appears to be a, a relationship in one direction, in this case where pack rats was better than um, boxes or us, but really when you look according, when you break it down according to some important variable, the direction reverses. So boxes RS is a better choice. It's just then in the trial period they had they had an unfair number of um, overnight packages, and it was the the cards were um, stacked against them because they had so many overnight packages, and overnight packages are just harder to get where they need to be on time. Okay, and again, this is called Simpson's Paradox. All right, guys, that's it. Be ready to um, practice some problems whenever you get to class next time. I'll see you then.